Okay, welcome to today's webinar, co-hosted by Illinois Extension and the Illinois Office of Broadband. We welcome Matt Schmidt, Deputy Director for Broadband within the Illinois Department of Commerce and Economic Opportunity. He's going to provide you with an update on opportunities that our communities and our state should be aware of in regards to community broadband development and expansion. Matt Schmidt, who many of you are now familiar with, is Deputy Director for Broadband within uh, DCO, and he administers the state's Office of Broadband and a variety of grant pro programs, um, including our nationally competitive Connect Illinois Infrastructure Grant Program. Uh, he specializes in technology deployment, infrastructure investment, economic development, and so many more things that he does for our state. He's really one of our top people leading the effort for broadband and spreading awareness of important information and just connecting leaders and organizations and networking and collaboration including with the U of I here. And so we're just so happy to have you on uh, to lead our state um, in, with broadband and beyond. And uh, thank you for coming on today um, on this Friday. Uh, I just want to encourage all the participants today to utilize the chat space to ask questions at any time during Matt's presentation. And if you have any technical issues, you can um, uh, direct message me or put anything in the chat box if you have a concern. Um, and when Matt's finished with his um, overview and his presentation, we'll have a Q&A and I'll send up also a follow-up email to all of you and those who registered with the slides and um, a link to the recording for today's session. And uh, if you're just jumping on the call and maybe you didn't register for this session, go ahead and um, direct message me your email address and I can make sure you get that email as well. I just want to say thank you again, Matt, uh, for being here to highlight these important opportunities, and I'll hand it over to you now. All right. Thank you so much, Nancy. Once again, it's a, a pleasure to collaborate with you uh, on spreading the good word on broadband in Illinois. And so uh, if you'll recall, one of my resolutions for the year 2021 was to, to do more on the, the federal broadband front and to, to lean into that opportunity to to share with uh, our federal partners our ideas on how to do broadband best, but also to make sure that we are doing everything we can to, lever er to leverage every last federal dollar we can uh, for Illinois, for our communities, for our stakeholders, just to make sure that we're doing what we can to meet our goals in Illinois. And so given the year that we've just been through, I think we all recognize uh, the critical importance of broadband and making sure it's everywhere. And so that's what brings us together today, uh, just to discuss uh, all of these federal funding opportunities, as well as our own uh, state uh, funding opportunities highlighted by our Connect Illinois grant program. And so I'd like to keep this conversational. Again, if there are any questions, please uh, throw it in the chat. And Nancy, feel free to, to MC here and interrupt at any stage in the game. Um, the, the goal here is not to have, I guess, uh, the final answer on every potential funding opportunity that's out there at the federal level, but rather to highlight kind of the big picture, the things that we should be looking at and tracking uh, to raise awareness and where there's an opportunity for us to collaborate together or to do some additional inquiry, whether it's, you know, working with the Office of Broadband or on your own, we just want to inspire that interest in seizing this moment, taking advantage of these, uh, these funding opportunities. And so with that said, I'll launch in here. I don't think this is going to take uh, the full hour, but uh, if there are any questions, I'll stick around as long as, uh, as, long as uh, I'm helpful. And so with that said, just a quick overview, we'll uh, start with the federal funding uh, highlighted by the Consolidated Appropriations Act, which we've dealt with in previous webinars and spending more time on the American Rescue Plan Act, or ARPA. Uh, more and more details come out about both of those uh, programs. And so we wanna uh, touch upon those today. Also, we'll uh, highlight uh, our state funding with our Connect Illinois grant program. Talk a little bit about what we anticipate with round three coming up this year. And then also talk a little bit about tools and resources that we're making available. Uh, again, this uh, webinar today, I think is more of a start of a conversation in the coming weeks about what we can do together to collaborate uh, on all these funding opportunities. And so uh, we will have an, up, uh, uh, an upcoming webinar series uh, focused on de developing broadband leadership. And so that series, it actually begins June 15th, very similar to what we did last May and June of 2020. Uh, where we uh, partnered with the Benton Institute for Broadband and Society based in Evanston here uh, and uh, heard from Bill Coleman, uh, who's running our Connected Communities program and a whole host of experts in uh, various aspects of broadband. And the idea here is we'd like to, to provide a resource for communities who have an unprecedented opportunity in front of them uh, to leverage dollars uh, for investment in broadband, whether it's infrastructure, access expansion, or 
affordability or use. Uh, this is truly a, a historic moment that we're, uh, we're facing and we wanna take full advantage of it. And so there's, uh, there's four uh, webinar installments devoted to uh, most of the infrastructure and access. And then there will be another one on date to be determined that's focused specifically on digital uh, equity and inclusion. And so the whole idea here is we want to start a conversation in the coming weeks about the opportunities in front of us, how to take advantage of them. And so we'll include a link to the uh, registration for the developing web, uh, leadership, I'm sorry, developing broadband leadership webinar series in the slides that we post on our Connect Illinois website, as well as in the, the email that follows this uh, webinar here today. So as I like to do, uh, uh, point folks to our Connect Illinois website. Uh, it is getting a, a, a revision, so it's going to look slightly different here if you log on on your own, uh, but the content is mostly the same uh, as what you'll see here. We're always adding to it, though, and one thing that we'll be updating after today's conversation and as more information comes to us is in this federal broadband uh, category here at the right. Uh, we want to share as much information as we can uh, just to help you uh, be informed on these opportunities in front of you. And I'll just say this, if you haven't signed up for our newsletter, a couple of tabs below, do that, uh, again, in partnership with the Benton Institute, another way that we try to keep folks uh, up to speed on the opportunities that are out there. And then finally, I'll just give a little preview. We have our Illinois broadband map, which is a fully interactive map that's going to go live soon. And so if you'd like to check that out on your own, uh, you can click on that interactive map tab. It's not up yet, but that's where it will be housed on our Connect Illinois website. And today, uh, we'll, we'll preview what that looks like as a valuable tool uh, for, for your broadband endeavors. So quick overview of the federal funding uh, that's in front of us, the Consolidated Appropriations Act uh, that was actually passed and signed into law in December of 2020, includes a lot of you know, great uh, investment in broadband uh, infrastructure access adoption. I'll spend a little bit of time talking about that. Of course, the American Rescue Plan Act, a lot of investment, $1.9 trillion of investment, uh, much of which uh, goes towards broadband. And then we also have a couple other pieces of federal legislation that we're keeping our eyes on uh, that uh, have certainly not passed, so there are no details necessarily, but Accessible Affordable Internet for All Act and also the American Jobs Plan, two additional pieces that could uh, uh, contribute significantly to this historic investment in broadband that we're seeing here in, in the year 2021. So uh, just a quick review of that Consolidated Appropriations Act. Again, we've spent some time uh, in previous webinar talking about this, so I'm not gonna get into the details too much, but overall a $2.3 trillion investment, uh, over $7 billion uh, directed to improve connectivity throughout the US, uh, an extension of CARES Act uh, deadlines. Uh, and so for those of you that are taking advantage of CARES Act spending, uh, your deadline may have been extended uh, throughout the year 2021. There's so much more that was included in there that, uh, that could get highlighted. We'll spend a little bit of time talking about a few of those provisions here. Uh, the Emergency Broadband Benefit Program, that actually went live on May 12th, and we're really excited about this. It's a $3.2 billion commitment to the FCC, the Federal Communications Commission, to essentially provide a subsidy uh, directly to your broadband provider. Uh, many, many broadband providers participating in this program here in Illinois. So chances are that your provider is participating. And what it boils down to is up to a $50 per month subsidy for broadband subscription services for eligible households uh, and a one-time $100 subsidy for the acquisition of uh, computing devices or laptops. And so even though it looks like a big chunk of money, this $3.2 billion, it's already going out the door across the country, including here in Illinois, and it's not expected to last much more than maybe six, seven, eight months, uh, and uh, by statute will expire uh, six months following the, uh, the, the, the COVID-19 pandemic. And so this is something that we, I just want to spend a little bit of time talking about this today, because it's truly a, a historic opportunity for, for us to leverage uh, a subsidy that will help buy down the, the subscription service price for your monthly broadband service. Uh, previously, we've had Lifeline, but at 925, and Harley is going to provide an incentive for adopting broadband. But $50 on top of that Lifeline subsidy, and you can make broadband affordable uh, throughout the state. And so we want providers uh, who are not offering this to make sure that you look at this, and then uh, folks throughout the state and organizations in particular that can help spread the word uh, to learn more about this. There's a few different ways to learn about this. Uh, one, the FCC has some information on its website regarding the emergency broadband benefit. You can scroll down and you can see uh, additional information regarding eligibility, how you can sign up for the, uh, the benefit. 
also the Universal Service Administrative Code, USAC, uh, might have a arguably a, a more neatly packaged uh, information or toolkit uh, for folks who want to learn more about this. We are also um, welcoming an organization, Heartland Forward, uh, into uh, Illinois to help us spread the word about the uh, emergency broadband benefit. And so look for a variety of different touch points regarding uh, the emergency broadband benefit and how your organizations or communities in your area can help spread the word. And so again, this isn't just gonna happen. We have to lean into it. We have to take the message to where people are. And so if you're in a position to help us spread the word, don't hesitate to reach out to broadband at illinois.gov and we'll put you in touch with some resources that you can pass along in your community. And again, quick overview of the emergency broadband benefit. Another opportunity that's in front of us for our communities, the Broadband Infrastructure Development Grant Program. At $300 million, it's relatively modest in comparison, but we're expecting uh, each state to, uh, to be able to leverage anywhere between five and $30 million of this total for investment in broadband infrastructure uh, in areas that are unserved or underserved. And so that's a key that uh, it's not available for areas statewide, but rather you have to look at where broadband access is lacking. And so we do have that broadband map that we'll point to here at the end of our, our time together that can help shine a light on where uh, a community might be most competitive for leveraging these dollars. Uh, these dollars uh, will flow to essentially collaborations between the state uh, and a fixed broadband provider or a political subdivision of the state in a fixed broadband provider. And so the whole idea here is to, uh, to try to create incentives for collaboration across sectors. And what I would say is this, if you are a local unit of government, a political subdivision that's interested in this program, please reach out to us at the Illinois Office of Broadband, again, broadband at illinois.gov. We like to do what we can to, to make sure that Illinois is putting forward uh, competitive applications and we can help match make and we can help um, well, uh, put our best foot forward as a state to make sure that we're uh, capturing as many of these dollars as possible. So again, if you're looking at this program, please reach out to us at broadband at illinois.gov. Uh, this notice of funding is posted and applications are due by August 17th. So this is a program to be focused on if you're looking at leveraging uh, infrastructure dollars because the clock is ticking. Another program that we're really interested in at the federal level, and again, this comes from the Consolidated Appropriations Act, uh, is the Connecting Minority Communities pilot program. Uh, again, at $285 million, it's relatively modest compared to some of these other buckets. But this is one of those pilot programs that, again, we see great promise in. And there are a number of eligible uh, institutions in Illinois that could apply, although the state cannot apply for these directly. We can be helpful. Uh, we can be a collaborator or a matchmaker. And uh, if there is an interested organization out there or institution out there that would like to learn more about this, please reach out to us again, broadband at illinois.gov. Uh, even though we were expecting and hoping to have information on this back in February, uh, NTIA, the National Telecommunications and Information Administration within the US Department of Commerce, they're inundated with a lot of programs to stand up this year. And so I think they're just being real with us. Uh, the, the funding notice likely is not going to come out until uh, July or August of 2021. But nonetheless, we know enough that we can start organizing around this. And so I would encourage folks who might be interested in this program uh, to either reach out or to, to be on the lookout. We'll certainly spread the word uh, through our, our uh, media when we have an opportunity to. So that's a quick overview of the Consolidated Appropriations Act. We could have spent a whole hour on that. But the American Rescue Plan, well, that's probably worth two hours. Um, one point nine trillion dollar investment uh, with some real great highlights uh, for broadband including 10 billion dollars in state block grants for broadband essentially the capital projects fund uh, illinois has a share of that we'll speak to that in a moment also uh, over 170 billion dollars for uh, our education institutions um, and i think one thing that we look at uh, over the past year is we've learned a lot of lessons collectively on how best to do remote learning and uh, many of us don't think it's necessarily going away as a, at least a hybrid model or a supplement to in-class uh, and in-person learning. And so the extent to which we're able to build out broadband infrastructure and uh, create ubiquitous access statewide, we see great opportunities for long-term benefits with remote learning. And so we wanna make sure that we're doing everything that we can uh, with our education stakeholders, our providers, our communities uh, to make sure that infrastructure, that access is there. And so here's one opportunity uh, in ARPA to do that. 
I won't get into too much more detail aside from referencing this $7.2 billion in emergency connectivity fund and E-rate dollars uh, for education. If you're uh, joining us today um, from a, a local school district or if your focus is on education or you're a stakeholder thereof, uh, I would just encourage you to, to, to uh, reach out to the State Board of Education and ISBE that are managing you know, great resources, whether it's GEARS funding or ESTER funding uh, targeted towards our education community. Again, these are uh, um, transformative investments that are being made. And whether you're a school district or a stakeholder at the local level focused on education, you know, uh, we'll be happy to put you in touch with uh, our partners at ISBE uh, to help you take advantage of these programs. So moving on from the education specific uh, programs that are included in the uh, America Rescue Plan Act, or ARPA, uh, $3.4 billion uh, in additional funding for community development block grants uh, through HUD, uh, Housing and Urban Development Department. And again, this is something that uh, it's eligible for broadband, it's also eligible for other uses. Um, but if you're a community that qualifies for HUD grant dollars and would like to use them for broadband, here's an opportunity for you. I'm not gonna say more about that, at least in the slides here today, but there's, again, another opportunity. And so uh, moving on to a couple of the items that I really wanted to highlight here today with the American Rescue Plan Act, uh, Coronavirus State and Local Fiscal Recovery Fund, uh, $350 billion overall uh, going through the US Department of Treasury, 195 billion of that directly to states. Uh, and what's interesting about this is uh, additional funding flows directly to our counties or our metro cities or also to other local governments. And so these are dollars, all of them, or some of them uh, could be used for broadband as well as other uh, uses. And so I think at the local uh, level, whether you're a county or a city or a local government, uh, you have an opportunity here for to looking to these dollars uh, and leveraging them for broadband infrastructure uh, expansion. And so this is not something that comes around every day. And so if uh, connectivity is a challenge for your community, I would really encourage you to learn more about the dollars that are available to you at the community, uh, the county level, uh, and, and take advantage of them. And if you have any questions about that, about where you stack, uh, don't hesitate to reach out to us at broadband.illinois.gov. Again, at minimum, we want to be able to, to provide you some good information and uh, point you in the right direction for taking next steps. Uh, in addition to that coronavirus state and local fiscal recovery fund, there's also the capital projects fund at U.S. Treasury. Uh, that's $10 billion included in that fund that essentially operates as a kind of a, a, a block grant program for our states. Uh, and it's something that a lot of us have been asking for for a long time. Not every state is as fortunate as Illinois to have a visionary governor and general assembly that has invested $400 million in our Connect Illinois broadband grant program. Uh, states that don't have that, this is truly a transformational investment that, uh, that is being made. Uh, for us, it's gonna help us reach our goals better and faster and put us in a, a, a much better position to compete with other states, uh, other markets around the world. And so we're really excited about the opportunity to leverage the, the funding in the Capital Projects Fund uh, and also throughout ARPA generally. And so for Illinois, that $10 billion essentially translated to roughly $300 million that we're able to use uh, for our investment in infrastructure around the state. So that transitions us to what we're doing here in Illinois. And uh, a lot of times uh, I'll spend a good deal of time talking about our, our program, Holistic in Nature, focus not just on infrastructure here with the Office of Broadband, but also digital equity. I'll give it uh, kind of a highlight treatment today. We'll talk a little bit more about our Connect Illinois grant program. So let's set that on the back burner for now. But in addition to that investment in infrastructure, we're developing an increasingly robust digital equity program, including our Illinois connected communities. We're wrapping up round one for that, moving on to round two. We'll be making an announcement soon. Uh, and hopefully there will be a round three down the road. So keep your eye out. Uh, also, our Broadband Ready program focused on regional collaboration uh, around broadband adoption, digital equity, uh, really adding value to the broadband mapping and the access data that we'll be spending some time on shortly. We also are, are looking to stand up a digital navigator program to help local communities with their digital literacy skills uh, building efforts with uh, community members. And also our Connect Illinois Computer Equity Network, which is uh, collecting used computers, refurbishing them, and distributing them on an equitable basis around the state. And so if you'd like to learn more about any of those digital equity programs, again, reach out to us either in the chat box or send uh, us an email, again, broadband at illinois.gov. 
be happy to provide some additional detail. But for the next couple of minutes, I'd like to talk a little bit about our Connect Illinois Broadband Grant Program. And this is something that we are really proud of, really excited at Illinois. It, um, at least currently, is the state's large, I'm sorry, the country's largest matching grant program ever at $400 million devoted to it. Um, we hope to, to do some really uh, incredible things in terms of expanding network access uh, and making broadband ubiquitous, uh, reaching homes, community anchor institutions, businesses, farms in every corner of the state. And so we are poised to announce our round two grantees here in the coming weeks. Um, but we're also looking to be announcing round three of our Connect Illinois grant program uh, this summer as well. And so historically what we've done with this program is we've given applicants up to $5 million per application, whether you're a broadband provider, a local community, uh, cooperative, uh, a nonprofit organized to provide uh, broadband uh, network access, up to $5 million per application, uh, an applicant can apply more than once. And uh, kind of in our DNA of this program is to try to leverage as many non-state match dollars as possible. Ideally, we'd like to turn every Connect Illinois grant dollar into at least $2 of overall investment. But we recognize that Illinois is a big state. There are some areas that are really expensive uh, to, to build out to. That's why they lack access now. And so that matching requirement is something that, uh, that we'll be talking a little bit more of uh, in, in a future notice of funding opportunity. Uh, but I think I would just emphasize to potential applicants, don't let that idea of a non-state match uh, hold you back from coming to us with your best ideas on how to uh, extend broadband access to hard to reach areas in unserved or underserved parts of the state. And those terms unserved or underserved, we've got a map on our website right now that kind of points to where those areas are. We'll also preview our new map in here in a moment, uh, which will show that in greater detail. Uh, historically, we've had three categories, uh, broadband access, innovation, and urban broadband for our Connect Illinois grant program. We uh, look to do something similar here with round three. And again, I would just say, if you are a potential applicant for the Connect Illinois grant program, now is the time to be looking at maps. Now is the time to be uh, putting together some of your ideas. We don't see drastic changes from round one or two to round three. Uh, we wanna be more nimble. Uh, we know what great projects look like. We'd like to turn around uh, grant awards as quick as we can. Uh, we know that uh, <laughs> states around the country and countries around the world are investing in broadband. And so there's, uh, there's a little bit of a pinch on our supply chains. And so we wanna do everything that we can to put our communities our providers, our grantees in a position to make these investments as quickly as possible. So let me emphasize again, now is the time to be thinking about your ideas for round three of Connect Illinois. All right, so let's uh, reorient back to our Connect Illinois website. Uh, and this is, I, I think, a good point for us um, to, to remind you where you can find some of these resources. Again, the federal broadband information that we've shared here will be updated under this tab, federal broadband. Again, if you want to uh, subscribe to our newsletter as a way of staying in touch and learning about what we're doing and what we're learning about various uh, state or federal funding opportunities, there's the place to check it out. And also, if you scroll down, uh, that Illinois broadband map will be linked directly to the interactive map tab here on our website. And so for the time being, you've got our current map. Um, but what I'm about to share with you will be taking the place of that current map. But before we do so, just a reminder, we have this webinar series coming up here uh, starting June 15th and 29th and the 13th and 27th of July. And we'll likely have another one devoted to digital equity in June, in, uh, I'm sorry, in August. Uh, if you'd like to learn more about this program, you certainly are welcome to reach out to us. Uh, otherwise, if you, uh, if you click on the link that we will be sending out in the email following today's webinar or in the link that will be part of this uh, posted online, you can, uh, you can register and learn more about each one of these sessions. And again, free of charge, we really encourage folks to take advantage of this webinar series, a way of putting our communities, uh, our providers, uh, our partnerships and collaborations across the state in a better position to seize these uh, historic funding opportunities. All right, and so that brings us, all right, to our Illinois broadband map. And so this has been, uh, about 18 months in process, uh, procuring our mapping uh, partner and uh, collecting data from our broadband providers around the state of Illinois and putting together a map that we view as much more accurate and timely and granular than what is currently available at the FCC's website. And that is what's currently linked to essentially 
on our Connect Illinois website. And so when you look at all of the investments that will be made in broadband uh, in Illinois here in the coming years, it's critically important that we have good mapping. And this is something that we take really seriously. And it's a resource not only for us at the Office of Broadband and for our state partners, but it's also an, an invaluable resource for our communities and for our providers and for folks around the state, uh, given the fact that you have this historic opportunity to leverage dollars to invest in broadband. And so we want you, whether you're uh, looking to, to better understand connectivity in your area because you want to take advantage of telehealth or remote uh, learning or, or work from home, uh, or you're involved in the community conversation about making investments in broadband, this is a great tool for you. And I just want to emphasize that this tool is always going to be a work in progress. It's by nature iterative. We'll be adding mapping layers and new resources for folks to use. And if you, if you delve into this and you say, ah, it's a little bit too much for me, there's so much going on, we will have uh, very soon a, a scaled back version of this map available and embedded on our Connect Illinois website. So if you just wanna enter in your home address, for instance, and find out who are the providers serving my area and what are my, my speeds, you can, you can do something as simple as that without having all of these options in front of you. But what I'd like to do today is take a moment and just, again, at a high level, I give you a, a rundown of our Illinois broadband map. And I think I just emphasize, we are always looking for feedback on this. And so whether you enter something in the chat box or you wanna email us directly, again, broadband at illinois.gov, we wanna hear from you. We wanna make this tool as valuable as possible for stakeholders around the state. And so if we get into this in this upper right-hand corner, we have this module, the access button is highlighted and we've clicked on a couple of different service levels, uh, the 100 megabit per second download, 20 megabit per second upload, wireline service, and similarly, a 25 by three uploads uh, uh, wireline service. And they are in different shades, you can see in the legend, uh, a darker shade of orange, if you will, a lighter shade of orange. And this will show you, based upon the data that we've collected from our providers uh, that has been field uh, test uh, verified by our mapping vendor, uh, where those areas lie in Illinois. And so much of Illinois is currently unserved. Uh, this dark orange is what we consider to be uh, served, anything above 100 by 20. Uh, anything between these two thresholds, 120 by 25 by three, we consider to be underserved. And anything that falls below that 25 by three is unserved. And so you look at this map, we have some work to do in Illinois. And so we would really look forward to leveraging these dollars we have uh, from the state, uh, from our federal partners, working with our provider community, working with individual communities uh, to collaborate on filling in this map and getting uh, uh, at least 100 by 20 service everywhere in the state. And so that's our goal. And this map is gonna be, again, an invaluable resource for getting there. Now you can scroll down on this access tab in the upper right-hand corner, and you can click on the mobile 5G and LTE broadband. And this is what it'll tell you in terms of the 5G designated or LTE designated areas in Illinois. And again, this is kind of a snapshot in time right now. The map isn't updated daily or weekly, uh, but it will be updated throughout the year. And so this is where things stand as of our last data collection. And I should just emphasize, you can, you can zoom in here, you can enter your address, you can check things out at your local level. You don't simply have to look at Illinois and all of our neighbors. You can, you can get much more granular. And so again, going back to this upper right-hand corner, or I'm sorry, upper left-hand corner module. And if you click down, you're able to click on different kinds of technology, fiber broadband, cable broadband, DSL, fixed wireless, for instance. And you scroll over to the legend here, and you'll see the darker the shade, the higher the performance level or the speeds, the lighter the shade, uh, the, the slower the, the connectivity. And it's color coded by technology type. And so you can kind of get at the statewide level, what kind of broadband technology, so to speak, is available in your area. And again, you can zoom in, you can get a much better understanding of what is where using this tool. And I think it's a good reminder right now for me to just mention, you know, no mapping tool is gonna to be perfect. It's our best effort at this point in time uh, to collect data, to work with our provider community, uh, to, to in include other data sources, to put what we know out there. I would always say any map is the start of a conversation. It should never be the final word. I was going to get that in somewhere, so there we have it. Again, if you're in the upper left-hand corner, you scroll down, you want to click on the density of providers in your area, and here we've, collect, uh, we've clicked on the density of providers offering service of at least 25 by 3. You can see here the darker shade in this heat map, 
the more providers in your area, the lighter the shade, the fewer the providers. Again, you see much of Illinois, we have some work to do. Now, if you click over upper left-hand corner, and instead of clicking the access tab, you go to statistics, we're able to leverage some American Community Survey data, ACS data, and you can see broadband avail availability by household. A lot of different options for you here to click on, but if you click on the county level, so you can see counties are highlighted here uh, at the 100 megabit per second down, 20 megabit per second up wireline service. This is what you see. And uh, the blue 90 to 100 percent coverage at that level of service in those counties, the lighter the color getting down into yellow. Again, some work to do. And so this just shows us at the county level, county averages, uh, where your county stacks up. You're able to actually click on your county if you'd like. So Iroquois County, for instance, and get a readout. So at this 25 by three level, roughly 50% of households have that access, which leads nearly 6,000 households unserved in this county. And you're also at the same time able to look at the percentage of households that have 100 by 20 service or, um, or 100 by 20 service that's wireline only. And so you could do this for every county in the state. And again, you can zoom in and you can actually um, uh, leverage a, a static PDF version of your county, of your school district, of a region of the state. We have over 1500 static maps essentially saved as PDFs uh, for different cuts of this map, so to speak. And so you don't necessarily have to go and do it yourself if you're very interested in something specific. So if you wanted to do the same thing again, clicking statistics in the upper left-hand corner, scrolling down to school districts, 100 by 20 wireline, you'll see all the school districts in Illinois. And this is the same sort of heat map that we just saw. Uh, blue, uh, deeper penetration of service at this level, 100 by 20. You get into the yellow, that's where we have some work to do. Uh, and so again, you can zoom in here. This is at the school district level. If you wanted to click on one school district, why not start with school district one? You can see Richland County Community Unit School District at 100 by 20, wireline service, 1.4%. Uh, and so that, that leaves over 6,600 unserved households in that uh, school district. And so again, this is, a, we think, a great tool for our education stakeholders uh, to better understand their districts and the needs in front of them. You're also able to, to scroll down here. And if you go down, not the access or the statistics, but to the general uh, module and scroll down and you're able to select actually economic development regions uh, of the state. And if you're interested in a regional cut at the map, you're able to see our 10 regions. You can zoom in. Uh, I'm not sure this is gonna be helpful for everybody, but it's just another way of analyzing data. You can do the same sort of thing by congressional district, counties, uh, state, uh, House or Senate districts, uh, or else other local units of government such as townships or precincts. And so again, just a, a quick snapshot of different ways that you're able to look at this data. Now, we spent so much time talking about how the state can work with our federal partners. We wanna leverage federal dollars. We wanna make sure we're doing everything that we can to put our state, our providers, our communities in a position to take full advantage of those federal dollars. One layer that we have, well, actually many layers on here, but one uh, aspect of the data is uh, federally funded projects. Right here, we see the USDA Reconnect program. This is a great program that we didn't spend time talking about today. Uh, it's relatively modestly funded, but nonetheless, it's a great program that the U.S. Department of Agriculture runs. And you can see some of the programs, the projects in Illinois that have been funded here in the, the northwest portion of the state with some projects with uh, Joe Carroll Energy. And also, you can see down in the uh, southern part of the state, uh, in green, 100% grant funded project and also in pink, uh, a 50-50 grant loan split. And so this is just one example of ways in which you can better understand the federal funding that's coming into the state. And what we hope to do is continue to update these layers and add layers. And if there are eligibility criteria or other helpful layers that can put you in a position as a uh, community stakeholder, a potential applicant, just an informed uh, you know, person or organization on the broadband front, we wanna make this map helpful for you. So that's the sneak peek of the map, uh, a high level overview of where we're at with our state and federal funding opportunities. Uh, again, this is the start of the conversation here this summer, by no means the last word. Uh, we really wanna try to collaborate as best we can 
with anybody who's interested in taking advantage of, again, historic investment in broadband that we're seeing at the state and federal levels. And so with that said, I know there's been some activity in the chat box and I apologize for not uh, slowing down to, to check it out, but uh, we can make up for that right now. And so Nancy, if you would like to, to uh, play MC here and help catch me up with uh, the, the, the chat box, I'd, yes. I'd welcome that. Yes. Well, I think I'm going to skip forward to the latest questions because I, I believe the participants were pretty intrigued with uh, the um, the map tools that you were presenting and uh, everybody's just wondering if um, it is it is available to the public to tab through those or are you using some sort of portal tool for your um, for internal purposes. Yeah, so great question. And uh, the, the quick answer is yes, we can share this link. Uh, Nancy, if you don't mind including it in the email that you send out later today, we can uh, we can share this. We have some high hopes with this mapping as, a, as an engagement tool with the general public. And so there's an aspect of the map that we don't have included in here yet. And that is a speed test web app that's gonna allow uh, folks to, to look at the map, zoom into their location, where they're, where they're at, whether it's home or business or anywhere in between. And if, if the map is telling them something that they just don't experience themselves, they'll have an opportunity to click on a speed test web app. We've all taken those. Uh, and it, it will tell them what their upload and download speed is at their location, but it will also feed into a data set that we're collecting so that we can have our own layer essentially uh, telling us what that, that speed test is revealing. And again, speed test data is not perfect, but it, it's another tool in, in uh, best understanding the lay of the land on the broadband front. And so that speed test is still in development. Um, so we're holding up on sharing this widely with the general public. But in the meantime, we want our stakeholders who need this kind of resource to take advantage of state or federal funding opportunities to have it at their disposal. So long, the long answer there, the short answer, yes. We'll, uh, we'll send it out in the email today. Sounds good. And um, I'm not for sure where the link is, but if you wanted to, you can either paste it in the chat or you can email it to me and I'll email it to everyone um, when we're done as well, or both. Um, and that would be great. And I'll uh, queue up the next question. So earlier um, during the presentation, you were um, uh, giving an overview of the FCC emergency broadband benefit program looks wonderful, um, looks like a great opportunity. And so there was one participant who was wondering if additional ISPs can be included. You had said most ISPs are already doing this, but um, in the, maybe there's a few others that are additional providers that um, can be a part of it. And is are they able to be added to that now or has has it sort of closed to any additional um, partners? If you're an ISP and you're interested in participating, please shoot us a line at broadband at illinois.gov and, and, uh, and we'll put you in touch with the ways of getting, um, what, of taking advantage of the program. And so um, I know that the dollars are flown out the door and this is not something that uh, will last forever. And so if you're a provider that's interested in this program, if you're an organization that's interested in spreading the word, now is the time to do that. Perfect. Yeah. So um, do you think it would be as simple as um, an organization would call the ISPs in their community and just verify that they're all um, on board with that? So I'll, I'll try to track it down here live, but we're still on the webinar. There's actually a um, there's a link that will show you the providers that are enrolled in the program. And I, I should be able to track that down and throw it in the chat box for everybody to see right now live while we're still talking. Okay. Um, there was one question that I actually attempted to give some information on, but told told the person that I would let you know. Um, so there was a question also within the, um, you were talking on the ARPA slides, um, the slides with about the American Rescue Plan Act funding that's coming through. Um, there was a, a bullet point about other local governments and so just to reiterate, does that include townships? And I had, you know, mentioned to the person, I, th I think other local governments probably do mean townships and um, other units of government, but I wanted to put the question to you if you happen to know more about that. We had had a webinar um, a few weeks ago on American Rescue Plan Act Treasury guidance, and she had mentioned um, during that webinar that, um, local 
uh, that um, the 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 smaller communities and townships should look for guidance on ARPA funds under non entitlement units, which I think also just means other other government other local governments. But I didn't know if you wanted to maybe touch on that for you townships. Know, Nancy, I don't I don't have more detail than what you've put out there. That's consistent okay. with my understanding. And so I okay. think you're giving good advice there. And I would just say if anybody if, if you do, I just I don't I don't want to speak from the hip here. Um, if if you if you have a specific question and you want a, a firm answer, we're able to uh, to just shoot us an email broadband at illinois.gov and we'll make sure we get you you know a firm answer. And so I just don't want to leave anybody with a, any confusion. And so sure. I think you're I think you're right, Nancy. But uh, if there's any specifics that we're not answering to your your uh, you know your benefit, just let us know. Okay. Um, and then alongside the FCC's emergency broadband benefit um, uh, opportunity, uh, another participant wanted to know if K through 12 schools have been informed of this, uh, maybe so they can let households know yeah. who uh, possibly participate in free lunch programs and things like that. Yeah, yeah. So there's a couple things happening, you know, internally here at the Office of Broadband. Uh, we are working with our, our peers in other state departments and agencies, certainly uh, the, the Board of Education and, and, and speaking of the benefits of the EBB program. Uh, there are a lot of tools and resources available to, to education uh, stakeholders in, in our school districts. And so I, I kind of want to stay in my lane and not speak too much about all of that that's out there. But certainly the EBB is one of them. And so we kind of we discussed it in, in, in broad brushstrokes today, but there are a lot of tools, whether it's ESSER funding or GEARS funding, um, uh, expanded uh, E-rate, and then, of course, the EBB. And so that's certainly something that um, that a family with with uh, well, with or without school age kids can take advantage of. And yes, we've uh, we've shared that with our, our partners at ISB. And, and I, you know, frankly, I think they were on it as well. I mean, this is not a big deal. And so it, it was not news to them. So wonderful. So thank you. And there's another question. Um, is the DCO considering increasing the maximum broadband infrastructure grant maximum amount to more than 5 million for a future round of funding? And if you know, so, how much more? Yeah. So we are always taking feedback from uh, potential applicants and other stakeholders on, on our grant programs. And so that, that would certainly be one of them. I think you, you look at the funding that's available out there, it might make sense to increase the, uh, the maximum award. I think we just want to make sure that we're, um, well, that, that, that we're striking the right balance and, uh, and, and not, you know, well, not putting out too much to any one project in any one time. But if, if folks have you know, strong views on this as a potential applicant, please let us know. And uh, we're certainly open to, to revisiting that. Okay, so I don't see any other questions. I wanna give people a moment to see if they have any other questions and you can put those in the chat box. Matt, I'll just give you sort of an open um, question to see if there's any takeaway that you wanna to give to people. Um, maybe uh, there's a question in your mind that you would ask if, um, if you were maybe uh, just new to the scene and, and starting to do planning, especially with the new opportunities that you mentioned, there might be communities that are feeling even more inspired and um, didn't know uh, if you had anything that you wanted to say to orient newcomers or any sort of takeaways for communities in general. Well, I just, I think it's just worth emphasizing that communities are at various stages, you know, of a, a continuum on the broadband front. And I think now we all recognize, whether you're a community large or small, the critical importance of, of having, uh, you know, first class broadband in your area. I mean, it's a necessity. And so if you're a community that has been thinking about this for a long time and you've got a vision, now is the time to go seek some dollars to, to make that vision a reality. But if you're a community that just in the last year has realized, hey, this is a conversation that we need to be part of and you feel like you're behind the eight ball, don't let that stop you from learning more and, and taking next steps. I think the key here is to, to reach out to you know, trusted you know, uh, collaborators, the House of Broadband, I hope is one, uh, that, that can provide you with some good counsel. Uh, I'll just say this, there are some great, great broadband consultants out there. There are also some ones that might not be the best. And so if you're a local unit of government or a community that wants to learn how to take next steps, I think one of the key pieces is starting that conversation with, with a trusted resource. 
And uh, and if you know we're not in, we're not in a position where you know we are we are sending any business to any <laughs> you know consultants directly or anything like that. But I think that we can help uh, local governments understand what you should be looking for in starting a conversation. What kind of help you might want to bring on board your team. The sorts of questions that you should be asking anybody you're looking to work with. Uh, I think that's a key point because we don't want to see anybody you know a community. Uh, you know, get excited about this opportunity, put resources behind it, put time and energy, which is invaluable, and then have a false start. We really want to help you get off on a strong footing, uh, get a, a good lay of the land with your providers in your community. Uh, what is your broadband vision? And so that's why we've been over the last year so so high on our, our Connected Communities program. Uh, and I'll just say it, it's so important that, that that local capacity building, that broadband planning takes place, that you're thoughtful about where you are and where you want to go. Um, right now, if you're just getting started, you're not too late to the game. Now is a great time to be thinking about broadband. And so I'll leave it there. If, uh, if any communities uh, or listeners have any questions, we'd be happy to, to, uh, to say more. Otherwise, again, a reminder that, that the Developing Broadband Leadership Webinar Series coming up this summer, we've designed it, we've timed it to sync up with these state and federal resources. So that's a great way of maybe being a casual listener and becoming an active participant over time. Also with our Illinois Connected Communities Program, we try to create some, some content for, for free riders for lack of a better term, for those on the outside who are not part of an official cohort that wanna learn more about the program and, and its key takeaways. And so those are just a couple of opportunities, but there's also a number of, of, of uh, organizations uh, outside of the, the Office of Broadband that can, that can be a, an invaluable resource for, for information too. Great. Simple question, Nancy. I give you a yes. long answer. And I, I think that's perfect. So, um, and we had had, you know, questions about the link to the map that's in the chat box, questions about the list of ISPs uh, who are um, participating in that emergency broadband benefit uh, program that's in the chat box as well. And of course, I'm going to be sending those links to everybody um, in the follow up email. I, I think, um, you know, one thing that we're going to be doing is linking up slides online as well, um, maybe retroactively, and then of course for the future, um, so that everybody can get get all the information in one spot. And uh, just really want to thank you, Matt, for coming on. We're always uh, very happy to have you on, and um, I think everybody here. Thanks again. There's a there's another um, link that Matt put in there uh, for provider information. Um, Right, yes, for the emergency broadband benefit program providers. Uh, so uh, just want to thank everyone for coming on. It was a really dynamic 45 minutes. And um, without any, any further thing, Matt, if you um, feel like you've covered everything, we can go ahead and uh, uh, part ways for now and want to just encourage everybody to come on back virtually. And uh, of course, the broadband um, emails in there as well. So uh, thanks again. Thank you, Nancy. Thanks, everybody. Thanks, everyone. Have a great day.